من الشيطان الرجيم من همزه ونفخه ونفثه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبيه ومصطفاه سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه وبعد My dear viewers, welcome to another live edition of our program as Koda and as you know that we're going live with the best we can do from home Alhamdulillah wa shukri but luckily, we're able to go live and we'll, we're able to take your calls and questions as well. So allow me to share with you uh, our phone numbers in case that uh, any of you would like to give us a call. Our phone numbers are working and we'll I'm happy to collect your calls and answer in the same order as you will receive, inshallah. Area code 001, then 347-806. 25 area code 061-361-489-1503 and uh, we'll live on the Facebook page and on the YouTube channel as well and we'll be more happy inshallah also to take your questions from uh, you know, on the Facebook particularly inshallah here I wanted to begin by tackling something really important. I'm sure everyone is uh, waiting for us to discuss. I'm taking out questions as well. That is uh, today, tonight, and tomorrow, as you own the uh, Hijri calendar, today is a means of Sha'ban. Today is a means of Sha'ban. Means at sunset. Uh, I mean, talking about our locality here in the Middle East, it's not sunset yet. Okay, and at sunset, they will get the night of the middle of Sha'ban. In the middle of Sha'ban, it is also night. The Prophet have seen some pictures and uh, a hadith in that respect, and uh, there are some also fabricated a hadith. And that's why it is our duty to explain to the viewers what to do this night and what is not prescribed, inshallah, to the best of our ability. So the sound regard is what the Prophet وسلم, said, that the Almighty Allah looks at his servants on this list and he forgives them except two people who will not be forgiven. Illa al is, is a person who asks its partner to Allah in worship. And Shahid, as man, is the school which may be boycotting, which may fight, whether physically or verbally, and not to each other, and not make family members. And that's why the Prophet وسلم, said that if you're interested in gaining forgiveness on this blessed night, then consign. And then only believers will be eligible for Allah's forgiveness on that night. And in fact, brothers and sisters, all of us are desperate to need Christian nowadays for this kind of forgiveness, for this kind of pardon. And help. So I know that some people they go an extra mile and they want people to push on that blessed night. It's a blessed night. Yes, it's a blessed night. What makes it a blessed night? Makes it a blessed night. In fact, uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala forgives all His servants on that night, except one mushaf. That means it. This night, okay, it's a special time which the believer gain forgiveness during, indeed, is a blessed time. So, in particular, cite him for dua, or pray as he regularly pray at night, that is prayer, that is a whether. 
achieve the state of man or the other kind. But there is no prescribed action that we have to do on that particular matter. Uh, and yeah, people ask, there is a get together in the fellowship, we do a and we offer uh, the night prayer similar to Taraweeh. We say, uh, Sheikh Emir said, hey, to work at home or by yourself in the masjid. But what is not okay is which the Prophet did not do. And that is gathering the people for a congregation and worship because this is not like a God and uh, any of the nights of So you want to worship, mashaAllah, and include us in your dua. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Our first caller tonight. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Name and where are you from, please? Okay. And I have a question uh, for you, Sheikha, uh, that I want to know that is there any authentic hadith about Islam that is it a punishment for uh, the non believers or uh, like our about the punishment for whom? Uh, okay. Is there any kind of uh, hadith that it is uh, it is a punishment for the non-believers and if uh, the person who dies with this, uh, like a believer, if the believer dies from it, uh, is there uh, is there a reward or any kind of thing like okay. that? Is there an authentic hadith about it? Okay, I got your question, Sister Harwa. Yes, yes. Thank you. Your question, Uh, I just want to hear from the viewers whether you can hear the call of uh, those who call during the live show. So as I said, we'll be more than happy to collect your questions, inshallah. Uh, um, the sound is not clear. I don't know what can I do. Order to make the sound clear. Sound. Okay. The market. Okay. How is the sound now? It is great. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Go ahead, Ferdaus. Uh, basically, uh, my sister in law is kind on the same table as my family. Question for those. Uh, so the sound is not okay on Facebook. We'll take a short break, a few minutes. Inshallah, we'll be back. We'll go live from uh, a separate device, inshallah, uh, in order to have a better connection and a better sound. Uh, if you bear with me, we'll be back in a few minutes. Okay? Thank you, sir. Join Dr. Muhammad Salah official YouTube channel for live videos, learn Islam, Q&A sessions, and more. Please subscribe and share to share in the reward. Go ahead, sister, please. Your name Hello. and where are you calling from? Uh, my name is Zainab. I'm calling from USA, Minnesota. Um, thank you so much for keeping us company with all these lectures and things that. 
You are most welcome, sister Zina. What is your question, please? Uh, my question is about Sana. Sometimes when I sit in the middle the childhood like Zuhu or Asana, I I I, I add um Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad after I do the Tahiyya. But that is just the middle one, it's not the last the Shahud. Okay. So should I do any anything got, I pray? Got your question. Got your question, sister Thank Zina. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Go ahead. Wa alaikum. Assalamualaikum. Wa rahmatullahi wa Sheikh, I have a question, Sheikh. Yes. Um, can you uh, tell us um how to 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 deal with the people of like innovation? Like how should we deal? How should a Muslim deal with a person, another Muslim that has innovation with him? Okay, what is your name, please, brother? Uh, my name is Muhammad. Okay, thank you, Muhammad. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Go ahead, brother. What is your name, please? Uh, my name is Shah Riyan. Okay, Shah. Go ahead. What is your question? You seem like you're calling from the UK. <clears throat> yes, I am, brother. Okay, go ahead. What is your question, brother? <clears throat> Uh, my question is, um, so if we remain in the lockdown during the month of Ramadan, I would like, I would like to leave Tarabi Salah for my, fam my fam family, for my wife and daughter. Um, and since I'm not a Harfid in the Quran, um, can I look at the uh, Quran from my mobile and leave the Salah from the beginning of the Quran until the end to do a khatma uh, in, the, in the month of Ramadan to Tarabi, inshallah. Question. Okay, got your question, Shahid. Thank you. Assalamu uh, alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam. Brother Saleh? Yes. Yes, my name is Ambreen and I'm calling from USA, New York. Okay. Uh, brother, I just had one question. Um, reading uh, Isha prayer, my concern was uh, my daughter, uh, Masha, she said she reads seven rakat, but sometimes she gets lazy and she misses it and she doesn't read it. So then I told her the best way to read it is read four first. Three with her, two sunnah. But I don't know if I've told her it's in the right way because that's how I read it. Can you just clarify how to read that the Isha prayer? Okay. If it's uh, it's better not missing it and reading it. So Got that was question. my question. That, Got your question, sister. Uh, Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. alaikum. Doctor. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead, brother. What is your name and where are you calling from? Uh, my name is Munib and I'm calling from uh, Pakistan. Go ahead, yeah, Munib. Quickly, please. Yeah. Um, Sheikh, we know uh, our Rida about uh, Allah Azza We know that Allah Azza is the provider uh, of Razak. Uh, um, you know, with this Aqidah in my mind, how do we like interpret the duty of the angels such as uh, Mikael, as far as, uh, to my understanding, is responsible of delivering the uh, sustenance. Okay, got your question, uh, Munib. the Can duty you... of uh, Malik al -Maut. That is all no. my uh, Thank questions. you, Munib, from Pakistan. Okay, thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Yes. Go ahead, sister. I'm listening. What is your question? I am Marwa from uh, from Canada. My yes. question is about, uh, we have here in Canada a program called the uh, uh, RESP, it's an education savings plan for the kids. Uh, you you, uh, you put, you put uh, in the bank and the government put 20 in order to encourage savings for the education of the kids so that the money will be only used in uh, university education so the government can give up to each child. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the problem is that the, the the account you have to put it in a saving account. You have to put this money in a saving account, so the uh, so uh, so you, so you can get the interest. If I get rid of the interest, is, is this halal? So the government take from us each month forty percent taxes. And another other question is that in order to make this account, the the the, the father and the mother must sign. So if I think it's haram. 
So my husband wants me to sign the contract. So uh, this is an interesting yeah. question. I want you to start over discussing what you said about. <coughs> you said uh, start the the ASP. So when you deposit a certain amount monthly in the account, how do you benefit out of that? Does the government? Uh, match the payment when the child reaches uh, the college level or what? No, each if I put one thousand dollars this year, the whole year, the government put two hundred dollars to encourage savings and to decrease the amount of. The, we have something called USAP when the when, when kids graduate from high school, so we. It's like uh, from the government, and it's not. It doesn't have uh, any interest on it uh, unless the, the the kids, the the students, paid for six months after graduation. So mm -hmm. this to encourage savings for the government. Okay. The bank gives the interest. The bank is the one that gives the interest. So the government gives like Hiba seven thousand dollars per kid for the whole for the whole life of the kids. Okay, but the problem is that if I want to put uh, this amount of money, uh, I have to put it in a savings. Accounts. And, My husband and, wanted and, to, and, to make it with that, a bank. And would that reduce the taxes that you have to pay, or it has nothing? To yeah, do? it's not taxable. It's not taxable. This amount I put in the bank, it's not taxable. Any amount, or there is a, a maximum amount? No, no, not maximum account amount. So if you put. My husband wants to save for the kids, like. I understand. Any amount you put hmm. in that account is not taxable. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Got your question. Thank you, sister. Go ahead. Assalamu alaikum okay. wa rahmatullahi and, uh, wa rahmatullahi wa alaikum. Yes, go ahead. Uh, Nu'man from the UK, Akhi. Nu'man from the UK. Go ahead, Nu'man. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam to Allah barakatuh. Sheikh, uh, I've got a question. Uh, obviously, that's why I'm calling. I know, that's uh, why I you're calling. You <laughs> saw your post on Facebook about 50 by Shaban and his blessings, people who don't associate any part of Allah and they don't have any um, boycotting their brothers and sisters and stuff. I was having this conversation with one of my friends. I think he actually, uh, I think he even spoke to one of the sheikh and he basically said his sister married a non-Muslim and the sheikh said, you have a choice to boycott her because this is clear haram what she's doing because she's basically it's completely haram for a Muslim woman to marry a non-Muslim. Mm. And uh, he and he's asking because he's boycotting that for the sake of Allah because of her heinous act because she's she's in Zina as a Zania. He's saying so well, that hadith means that he should not I boycott question, her no because what she's yes, I got your question. Thank you, Akhi Norman. I will answer you inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Go ahead. The brother from India will present his question first. I know that there is another caller from the UK. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Hello, I'm from India. I'm Zer. Go ahead. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Okay, I have a question. I have a question regarding uh, one person has given me the hadith uh, that Wal Mahdi Yuhillah is Ibn Mayyam. Explain me about this hadith. Actually, I don't know about this hadith. What is the hadith, Akhi? Wal uh, Mahdi Yuhillah is Ibn Mayyam. Wal Mahdi Yuhillah is Ibn Mayyam. Okay. Okay, got your question, Akhi. Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Go ahead, brother. Yeah. From the UK. Go ahead. Okay, so now. Yes, yes, Jazakallah uh, Shah. Uh, okay, yes, um, so my question is on the wiping of the feet, wiping of the shoes, wiping of the socks over the feet. Um, so someone was saying that you are only allowed to do that if you put on the socks when you're in wudu. So for example, you're not allowed to um, to wake up for fajr, put on the socks, um, do wudu over the socks, and then take off the socks and go back to sleep. You have to you have to have already put on the socks when you're in wudu to wipe over the socks. That's what someone is saying is the, is the condition true. to wipe over the socks. That, that is true. So, so you cannot... You can cannot wipe on socks or boots unless if you had already wudu before you put them on. But if you don't have wudu and you put them on, next time you want to make wudu, you have to take them off, okay? Okay, yes, that makes sense. Jazakallah, share that. Assalamu alaikum. Go ahead. 
Assalamualaikum. Alaikum salam, sister. Name and where are you calling from, please? Uh, my name is Amina. I'm calling from United States. I had a question last time I asked you, but I didn't get the answer. What but question again? I said I asked you a question last time, like about uh, being a like being a, a judge. I remember last time I asked you, but now like I'm trying to figure out. What like, the question, Sister Amina, please? Yeah, could you please help me to figure out like which is the best help for a woman? Sister like, Amina, Sister Amina, can you say, yes, say your question? What is your question? Yeah, could you My question is like which jobs is good for a woman? Which job is should... good for a woman? Okay. Yes. yes. Right. Thank you, Sister Amina. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Now I'm sorry. Hello? Name and what are you calling from, please? Assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Asia from KSA. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Asia. Welcome. Jazakallah. Jazakallah, Sheikh. Actually, the voice was interrupted, so I could not get it. Is there any special event for 15 Shaban at night, or what do we have to do? Can you please tell it again? Jazakallah. Thank you. All right. So, mashallah, we have maybe 15 callers. So let's tackle some of those questions first. Uh, we said about Sister Marwa Khan, how the Prophet Sallallahu said, those epidemic and pandemic diseases, including plague, COVID-19, whenever a believer is tested with any form, that's a means of mercy, provided he endures it patiently. He does not move from one place to another, which leads to the transmission of the disease because it is contagious. He anticipates the reward from Allah, so he receives the reward of Shaheed, whether he, uh, he contracted the virus or if he's safe and sound. So this is what we say, the prophetic guidance in this regard. Thank you, Marwa Khan. Tawfiq from Sweden. He applied for an online course and uh, they said the course is $900. But if you were to take uh, the course and you pay on an installment, then the payment is $1,000. Is that permissible or is it entitled for riba does this consider to be riba no this is not considered to be interest or riba but the prices is, are different true but there are two different prices there are two different prices you may choose this you may choose that it would be riba it would be riba if the person is told nine hundred dollars but if you will pay on an installment then you will have to pay interest that much so the plan will be based on how much interest you'll pay. But if you sell the same goods with two different prices, one for cash and one for the installment, that is permissible and that's called al-bay'u uh, Brother Wahid from Riyadh who asked if I am praying at home with my family and uh, my wife and my son, do they line up behind me? No. If I am by myself, then I am in front and my wife is behind me. Wait a minute. What if I am by myself and I have a man? Then to the, my right. Then two people. Then they line up behind me and the sister behind them. Even she, though she's my mother or she's my wife or she's my sister. Okay? What about if we have a child? He will line up next to me like you said. The son would line up, line up next to you. On the same line and then the wife will be behind insha'Allah so the right setup is the same like at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu the same as we pray in the masjid the Imam if there are more than one ma'mum or follower then right behind the Imam three four five thousand it doesn't matter then the children then the ladies but the children do not line up with the ladies and the ladies do not line up next to the man, even if she is your wife, even if she is your respected mother. Uh, Abu Abdullah from Birmingham. Yani, 
he asked a question and the question was asked by also Shahid from the UK but it is breaking my heart it is breaking my heart to imagine that we're not going to pray in the Masjid in Ramadan and unfortunately the authorities rushed to announce that the Masjid will not be open during Ramadan I wish rather they have invoked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for us to recover and get rid of this infection before Ramadan especially when you know that a lot of businesses are reopening a lot of governments are considering uh, removing the lockdown and letting the people go back to work in order to survive so when I see the movie theaters are open and the masjid are closed it breaks my heart my suggestion my suggestion and again I have no control it's just mere suggestion whether the masjid in Muslim countries or non-Muslim countries that's my humble suggestion okay and I know that if you are if you're having an authority in your community you can actually do that but if you don't then my suggestion is every masjid has an imam and has a muazzin and a couple workers they should establish the jama'ah the five times a day they should establish the jama'ah five times a day and the imam and two whether the the, the muazzin and the worker the maintenance guy they should get together even though they are parting from each other keeping the social distancing and you should give the khutbah and hold the jum'ah in every masjid I don't see a reason why the jum'ah is suspended while according to Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayh and may Allah be pleased with him jum'ah is valid with an imam and three followers okay Ibn Hazm al-Zahiri said Jum'ah is valid with whatever any congregational prayer is valid with. So an imam with one follower in the masjid go ahead and establish the Jum'ah. So when some of my colleagues are going to the masjid in the Muslim countries, why? Because they said, well, officially we have to sign that we've attended and we'll spend a couple hours there. So they're going to sign that they attended and that's on Friday. But meanwhile, they will not pray Jum'ah. That's sad. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Yes, go ahead. I'm taking the call from India first, please. Go ahead. Your name? Yeah, my name is Musaddiq. I'm calling from Kashmir. Musaddiq from Kashmir. Go ahead, Musaddiq. Yes. Okay, I have two questions. The first one, this one, Hadi, is it possible I need little explanation in order to help me understand. Okay, the Hadi is be discreet in order to achieve what you want for everyone who is blessed is envied so albani has classified it sahih so i tried to look for explanation in islam qa but that was not satisfactory so if you could please you know help us to understand this right. thank you and, but, and, and, yes. and the second question is will muslims be held accountable for their thoughts provided they don't act on it Let's suppose I envied someone, but I don't act it or I don't show, you know, ill behavior towards that person. So would Muslims be held accountable? Okay. So those are the two questions, Thank you. if you can answer. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, the caller from the UK. Assalamu alaikum, you're live. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brother Salah. I have a question uh, actually regarding my cousin that she got some coronavirus symptoms and she's in UK. Uh, but at back home in India, her family is quite worried about her and what they're doing, they're doing together a talim, like reading Surah Yaseen and Azkar and others and then they're doing dua together or calling people and doing dua together. So would it be valid? Would it come be... Is it coming from Sunnah? So if you just clarify that for me, that would be really helpful. Sure. I can pass them. Inshallah. Thank you, sister. From the UK. Sister Fazia. Sister Fazia yes, from the UK. I'm gonna take one last call. Inshallah, this is gonna be the last call because I have a, a long backlog. Assalamu alaikum. Last call. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah, Neem, and where are you calling from, please? I'm Idris, calling from Pakistan. Yeah, Idris, go ahead. 
I had two questions uh, respecting Sheikh. My first question was, uh, like, uh, as you have mentioned, uh, uh, and we have seen in the hadith, uh, authentic hadith, that uh, Mondays and Thursdays are uh, uh, the required days that if you want to fast, voluntarily you have to fast on the Mondays and the Tuesdays. Uh, and uh, by mistake, if uh, a person uh, fasts on the Monday, can, can he sp uh, escape the Thursday or uh, has uh, uh, forgotten to fast on the Monday, uh, can he fast on uh, Thursday uh, as he has forgotten the Mondays? Uh, and my second question was that uh, uh, for decreasing my de sexual desires, uh, I vol voluntarily fast uh, every uh, Tuesdays and uh, Mondays, but the, uh, the lust doesn't decrease. Uh, is there any other way that uh, I could uh, apply to myself? Thank are, you. Are you married, Idris? No, no, I'm not married. Why don't you get married? Uh, because uh, we have uh, in place where we live, uh, where I live, the marriage has gotten uh, extremely uh, di difficult because uh, the the financial crisis have uh, crushed the nikahs and uh, they have uh, the cultures have uh, uh, actually, actually, to be actually, frank. Yes. The culture have, move to yes. Karachi. It's cheap. Move to Karachi and get married there. It's cheaper. Inshallah. 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 Barakallah fikum. Thank you. You're welcome. Barakallah fikum. So as I say, brothers and sisters, that was the last call because I have uh, a long list of questions. I will do my best, inshallah, to answer them first. Uh, and inshallah, we're improving. I mean, we're doing our best to have better connections. Um, and inshallah, we'll work on uh, making certain next time the broadcast will be better and much more professional, inshallah. So... Uh, Abu Abdullah from the UK and Shahid also, their questions were concerning if I'm going to be leading the Taraweeh at home. <clears throat> and today as well, I want to look for a sound system because I decided, well, it seems like we're going to be praying Taraweeh at home on the rooftop. So, uh, yes, in this case, if you're not hafal, if you're not memorized the Quran, you may carry the Mus'haf in your hand, okay? And uh, leave a desk or a small table next to you so that inshallah when you make a rukua you can place it on it. Do not put it on the floor. And uh, better than that you can carry your smartphone which has a digital Quran. You can actually uh, read through it. So it is permissible. It is permissible to read from an open Quran from a smart device while praying particularly the nafila prayer and the taraweeh. And uh, may Allah accept from all of us. Uh, we'll be talking about how to prepare for Ramadan and the best reception for Ramadan, inshallah. Muhammad, who called earlier, how to deal with the people of innovations. We live innovation in innovations, and innovations are surrounding us 370, uh, 360 and 24-7. So uh, if, if one may think that we're going to boycott everyone who makes an innovation, you will be gravely mistaken. And also, not all innovations the same. There are some innovations which may lead to outsing the person out of the deen, and some innovations which are considered sins, but they are uh, they do not take the person out of the deen. There are major innovations, such as in the belief of the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the concept of uh, life after death, and uh, uh, incarnation and, and so on. But uh, a person who is following the vast majority of the scholars, whenever you see somebody is raising the hand and making qunut, for you, you perceive it as an innovation. But this person is following Imam al-Shafi'i and he believes he's okay. Do not object to him. Do not make a big deal out of him. You pray in Pakistan, they don't move the finger in, uh, in the tashahud, the index finger. Uh, mainly they're following the Hanafi Madhab and they consider that moving the finger would invalidate the prayer. So those issues would not invalidate the prayer and they should not cause any discourse among us. Okay? But of course when a person is having the innovation is pertaining to belief or the names and attributes of Allah or the matter of the Qadr that is totally different. Then we'll explain to them if they don't know and if he is leading a community, we have nothing to do with them in order to purify and perfect my ibadah and my belief. Uh, Sister 
Ambreen, Ambreen from the USA. May Allah bless you and your daughter. She's teaching her the right way to pray Isha. Isha consists of four rakahs. This is the father prayer. Then after Isha, there are two rakahs which are emphatic sunnah. Highly recommended that the Prophet ﷺ was very keen to pray them even if he was traveling. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not going to take any calls until I finish those questions. Uh, because it will not be fair for people who called earlier and deposited questions to wrap up the episode without answering them. I will do my best, inshallah, to finish those questions up. Then, inshallah, if there is any time left, I'll be more than happy to start taking some of your questions. Thank you so much, and I appreciate your patience and your cooperation. So, after Isha, two rakah sunnah. Then, afterward, the witr, if you are planning to satisfy with the witr, witr, three rakahs. You can pray the three rakahs all together with one tashahud and taslim by the end. Or you can pray raka, uh, two rakahs by themselves, tashahud and taslim, then one rakah by itself. And the least number of rakahs for wit is one rakah. So for people who just simply pray isha, then sunnah two rakahs, and they get up to pray one independent rakah with the intention of praying wit, and they make the qunut after ruku'ah, that is perfectly valid. Thank you, Ambreen, and may Allah bless you and your family. It says, how do you understand the name of Allah al-Razzaq in the context of knowing that there are angels who are in charge of distributing the risk and so on? Akhi, even Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, Innama ana qasim. I'm just a divider. I'm just a person who distributes and dispenses what Allah the Almighty has provided. Okay. Allah is a razzaq and this is an extensive form of razzaq. Yani the only one who provides. Didn't he say, وَفِي السَّمَاءِ رِزْقُكُمْ وَمَا Okay, that's in the same surah, by the way, in which Allah mentioned his name, al razzaq Surah al zariyat So it says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الرَّزَّاقُ ذُو الْقُوَّةِ الْمَتِينَ Allah is the only provider and the ever and the constant provider. He has made some of us means to deliver the provision to others. So when you work for somebody and your employer by the end of the month gives you your salary and gives you a bonus, you're very happy with him. You want to kiss his head. You want to kiss his hand. And he's just a transmitter and he did not provide for you for free. He paid you for your work. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for everyone, believers and non-believers. So, if you want to understand how the angels function, and when they distribute the risk, and there is an angel who's in a charge for the wind, for the clouds, Mikael, so he sends down the rain, he is been commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Jibreel alayhi salam did not come to visit the Prophet sallallahu for a while, it was a couple weeks, and he was so anxiously waiting for him, to answer the questions which the Meccan pagans presented to him. Then finally, after a couple weeks, he came. He said, Ya Akhi Jibreel, what took you so long? Why didn't you come? He said, وَمَا نَتَنَزَّلُ إِلَّا بِأَمْرِ رَبِّكَ لَهُ مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِينَا وَمَا خَلْفَنَا وَمَا بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ وَمَا كَانَ رَبُّكَ نَسِيًّا What does it mean? He said, Ya Muhammad, we, all the angels, we do not come down on our own. Illa bi amri rabbi. So when Allah says do, we do. Do not, do not. And that's why in Surah Al-Tahrim he said about the angels, La ya'asoon Allah ma amarahum wa yaf'aloon ma yu'maroon. They do not disobey Allah the Almighty in any command, and they do as they were commanded. Sister Marwa from Canada, the ESP, ESP, would you please allow me to make some phone calls to our brothers and our colleagues in Canada and inquire more about the ESP system, okay? Um, I was about to give you an answer, then I said, wait a minute, you know, I would rather verify and find out because this is a business transaction and not only Marwa will be listening, her husband and others, from Canada. So they will say, the Sheikh said it's halal. Okay, I was about to say, it's halal, but you would have to give away the interest. But would you please allow me 
Inshallah, until the next episode, I will get back to you with an answer, Sister Marwa. And I hope uh, you understand that. Akhi Nu'man from the UK. And Nu'man normally calls to, uh, to ask questions, not to invite me for lunch or dinner or for, uh, uh, for biryani or chicken tikka. So I know you're calling for a question, Akhi Nu'man. But this question today is not about marriage. It's about the 15th of Sha'ban. And also Sister Asya from the case. They said in the beginning the sound was not clear. When I spoke about uh, seven minutes about the virtues of the middle of Sha'ban and what to do and what not to do in the middle of Sha'ban. So let me, in a couple of minutes, wrap it up once, once again. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, whenever it is the middle of Sha'ban, the Almighty Allah looks at his servants and he forgives everyone except two. Mushrik, a person who associates partners to Allah in worship, and Mushahin, al shahna or al baghda is hatred, discourse, uh, uh, disassociating yourself from your relatives and your brothers and sisters in Islam. So boycotting them, boycotting them. That's called shahna. I have an issue with my neighbor. So I'm passing by and I don't say hi. He says, Salaamu Alaikum, I ain't replying to him. I go to the masjid and I'm not talking to the imam or to the person next to me. That's called shahna. So Allah will forgive every Muslim, every believer, except these two, until they reconcile. So tonight, which will begin in a couple hours in the Middle East, and uh, maybe more, if you're living in North America, you're behind us seven hours. Take advantage of this offer, the divine offer of forgiveness. Allah will forgive you all your sins, the minor sins, obviously. So pick up the phone, reconcile with family members, brothers and sisters, you, we never know who's going to die today or tomorrow, who's going to get infected, who's going to, uh, you know, contract the virus and die. It happens in, in a matter of a day or two. So this is a reminder. May Allah keep us all safe and our loved ones and all the ummah. I mean. But the hadith is very clear. Shahna, no forgiveness. Got it? So he says that somebody whose sister is committing a major sin, she is married to a non-Muslim, and this relationship is perceived as adultery. And that's why he's boycotting her. He's not talking to her. That is not applicable here, brothers. You know, when, when, when the Prophet ﷺ boycott Ka'b ibn Malik, Murar ibn Rabi'ah, and Hilal ibn Umayyah, three companions, because Allah commanded them to boycott them because they did something terrible. They stayed behind and they did not attend the Battle of Tabuk. So that is... Um, in certain conditions, if you think that they boycott because of committing a major sin or indulging into a heinous sin would help that person to come back to their senses, then it is prescribed. Would that affect uh, the offer that Allah is offering tonight? No, it will not. But may Allah guide your sister. May Allah bring her back to the deen. And may Allah grant her a goodly spouse and reconcile between you both. We're done with Sister Asia as well. Sister Amina from the USA. What kind of a job can a woman take? Any job that suits a woman. Okay, a teacher, a nurse, a gynecologist, an obstetric doctor. Okay, an architect working from office. Okay, a job that keeps and uh, guards her modesty, her chastity, and her feminism as a woman. You know when a man is wearing the helmet and the torn jeans and the boots and is working as a construction engineer. She is encountering a lot of hassle with the workers and mixing with them and having to wear certain clothes. While she could work in another job that suits her. And working is halal whenever it is needed, of course. Musaddaq from uh, Kashmir. Wait a minute, let me see. <coughs> Musaddiq from Kashmir. Uh, he asked about, uh, you know, a hadith which guides. There are some narrations uh, because that text is not uh, exactly sound. The hadith which the Prophet 
is guiding us to keep our projects confidential because some people may envy you. That's advised. That is advised. Even in the dream, whenever you see a night vision, which is good, which is pleasant, the Prophet ﷺ said you may share it only with your loved ones because there is an envy even in the dream. And that is stated in Surah uh, Yusuf ﷺ. قال يا بني لا تقصص رؤياك على إخوتك فيكيد لك كيدا إن الشيطان للإنسان عدو مبين. What about if somebody envies but he doesn't act upon the envy? What do you mean he doesn't act upon the envy? You know? What does it mean? Envy is forbidden and it is a major sin. And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said لا تحسد. And the hasad mainly happens with the eyes and the heart. Even if the person doesn't talk about it. So in order to avoid that, when you see somebody who possesses something that you like, just say, Allahumma barik. Oh Allah, bless him in it. Bless him for it. The Prophet said, Halla barak. This is what we should uh, say and do. Akhi Azam from India, he says, uh, لا مهدية إلا عيسى. No, this is not a hadith. This is not a hadith. The hadith concerning al Mahdi, أخي, al Mahdi Muhammad ibn Abdullah al Mahdi will be from the offspring of Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, and from Quraysh, and Allah سبحانه وتعالى will fix him in a day and night. His name would suit the name of the Prophet. And his father's name would consign the name of the Prophet's father, Muhammad ibn Abdullah al-Mahdi. So Isa is a Nabi, but Mahdi in a sense that he is rightly guided. But not he's a Mahdi who will come by the end of time. And as I say, brothers and sisters, I'm really considering, inshallah, Azzajal, beginning a series, maybe next week, about the hereafter and the signs of the Day of Judgment. If you guys think, especially those who are watching me live, whether on the YouTube or the Facebook. If you think it is needed, so your feedback will help me, inshallah, whether to begin the series, <coughs> inshallah. It will be about journey to the hereafter. And that will begin with the signs, the minor and the major signs that precede the day of judgment and so on. If you think you need it, inshallah, as I shared, that would mean the comment bar and hopefully, inshallah, we'll work on it. And don't forget to share with us where you're calling and watching uh, from. Sister Fawzia from the UK has a family member who uh, contracted uh, COVID-19. She's tested positive and she's in the hospital. So the family get together to make dua for her, no problem. They uh, read Quran and they make dua for her, no problem. And it is best if everyone makes dua for her on their own. There is no specific time that we have to get together. Unless if, you know, the family are saying to make sure that everyone is praying for her. Okay? So when somebody is sick, dua is one of the greatest means of help during these circumstances. And that's why I encourage you all brothers and sisters to make dua for our sister and everyone who has uh, contracted uh, COVID-19 or any other Diseases, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them all shifa. Last question, and I'll take one more call since it is the last question. Assalamu alaikum. Name and where are you Hello? calling from, please? Can, I, can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. What is your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, my name is Maria. I'm calling from Manchester. Okay, Sister Maria, go ahead. Uh, my question is, uh, you know, for example, if a guest house owner, Muslim, have a guest house and people's going there sleeping, for example, they like boyfriends and girlfriends, and most of them they're going there do zina and smoking, all these things. It's not allowed for Muslim to, to have a guest house like this. And okay. also my other question is, if a cleaner uh, go to clean the house, the guest house, she have any problem to clean the house? I don't know if you understand my, yes, my question. Yes, yes, I understand. Thank you, Sister Maria from the UK, Manchester. Bye. 
Idris from Pakistan. He said that you taught us the hadith of fasting on Mondays and Thursdays and you should fast. It's voluntary. Fasting on Mondays and Thursdays it is voluntary fasting but it is praiseworthy and the Prophet Sallallahu used to fast on Mondays and Thursdays. And if you didn't get to fast on Monday, you can fast on Thursday. If you want to miss, uh, if you happen to miss Monday, you want to make it up on Tuesday, that is permissible because it's all voluntary. And as for, we're talking about uh, the middle of Sha'ban, 13th, 14th, and 15th of Sha'ban, as well as every lunar month, it is highly recommended to fast throughout the three days. And if you didn't get to fast because you were traveling, you were sick, you were whatever, you can make up uh, that fasting in another three days. So if you didn't fast yesterday, Monday, and today, Tuesday, you can fast tomorrow, Wednesday, and then Thursday, and even Friday, as long as it is connected. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And this Hello. is going to be our last uh, call for the day. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, uh, this is Zainab from Canada. Sister Zainab, yes. go ahead. Yes, I just wanted to uh, know about uh, this uh, reading of, uh, like, you know, as we are not praying and messages nowadays, so we are pray uh, praying Bajamat at home with my kids and my husband. So when uh, I'm talking about the prayers in which we have to be silent, so the followers, like if I'm uh, praying uh, behind my husband, so Sur Fatiha, do, and uh, even for the silent prayer, the other Quran uh, surahs, do I have to recite at my own, or I have to keep silent? Yeah, your question, Sister Zainab from. Because I think. Yes. From my husband, what he was telling me, because he says it's it's kind of uh, like some uh, um, Hanafi, and yes. I, I'm, I'm not sure, but... I'm sure, I'm sure. I got your question, and I will be able to see the answer to you, inshallah. Thank you, Sister Zainab. Okay. And as I said, that was the last call. So, uh, Sister uh, <clears throat> no, uh, Idris from Pakistan first. <clears throat> His second question, he's been fasting, while in fasting, but it is hard with regards to the sexual desire. Akhi, the solution to the sexual desire is in here, in the eyes. Lower your gaze. Don't look at anything, whether on the social media, or on television, or in the commercials, or while in the street, on the moon. Wallahi, when you lower your gaze, you will not have this problem of the sexual desire. So as much as you can. And as I said, move to Karachi, you can get married there, it's a lot cheaper than Islamabad or uh, Lahore. Uh, Sister Maria from Manchester, the guest house which is rented to boyfriends and girlfriends whom you know that they will be committing adultery. As a Muslim, I'm not supposed to take part in anything which I know that it will be utilized in what is haram. Okay? The Almighty Allah said in the Quran, وَلَا تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ You should not facilitate, help and assist in, uh, uh, each other in committing and in doing what is forbidden. Sister Zainab, last caller, uh, said, since we'll be praying at home, so my husband uh, is saying that if I am reciting the Fatiha, then you don't have to recite. No. Uh, and this is obviously according to Abu Hanifa, that is absolutely correct according to Abu Hanifa. The correct view according to the sound hadith and what the Prophet Sallallahu said, and the vast majority of the scholars, Imam and Ma'mum, everyone should recite the Fatiha on their own. So now in the silent prayer, it's not silent. Uh, you call it silent, but it's not silent. We do recite, but not out loud. In Dhuhr, in Asr, and in the uh, second, and I'm um, sorry, in the third and the fourth raka'ah uh, of uh, Isha, and in the third raka'ah of Maghrib, we recite, but not out loud. So as a ma'mum, I will recite as a follower. The imam is reciting on his own quietly. And I recite on my own quietly as well. I recite the Fatiha. Okay? Barakallahu feekum. Brothers and sisters, may Allah bless you all. Thank you so much for your patience and for tuning in today. Uh, and 
as I promised, inshallah, we'll try to uh, make it better, inshallah. Most likely, we'll go on live tomorrow from the studio, inshallah, for Guardians of the Pious. We'll do our best. Uh, we'll answer all your calls. If there was any question that came uh, on the page, it will be answered, inshallah, in the next episode. And uh, make sure you take advantage of tonight. Gain forgiveness and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, remove this hardship from all of us. Akhulu qawli hada wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Subhanak Allah wa bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha ilan. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ulaik. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Your mercy is what I beseech. Keep in my heart your remembrance and in your deen allow me to advance. Help me in my quest, permit me to pass the ultimate test. Help me in my quest, permit me to pass the ultimate test. Allah is my heart's speech, your mercy is what I beseech. Keep in my heart your remembrance and in your deen allow me to advance. Love.